Welcome to Getting Started with Canvas. In this portion, we'll be discussing what it looks like inside your course. So from within my course, on my left side menu, the one of the most important pieces is adding announcements. This process does work slightly differently than in Blackboard. When I proceed to announcements, I do have a large blue button that says plus announcement. From here, I can give my announcement a title. I can convey whatever specific information I need to get to my students. I do have access to the complete rich content editor, which we will discuss in more detail later, but I can link out to any particular portion of my course. I can add images or documents, voice threads, YouTube videos, anything like that that I need to. I can also attach files if students need access to something. I do down here have the option to delay posting, and that would allow me to post my announcement, say, Monday morning at 8 a.m. without me necessarily having to be online at that time. Again, important to remember to hit save at the bottom of my announcement menu. Note that students do have the ability to reply, and again, make sure you have those notifications enabled so that you see those replies. The other important portion of our left side menu to get started is our settings. As you can see, there's a lot of options in this side list, and there are actually many that are already hidden at this point. You want to limit what students have access to, simply because if they have access to this announcements tab, they do have the ability to work outside of the modules as you've designed them. For example, if I want students to work through this in a particular order where they work on their syllabus and make the module, if I want them to make sure that they've engaged with this content before I give them an assignment, I want to make sure they can't access that assignments tab independently. By going to settings, I do have a navigation button up here on the tabs at the top. Any items that my students actually must use should be left in the top portion of the course navigation list. Anything that they do not specifically need access to should be dragged to the bottom portion of the screen. For example, if you do not use Lockdown Browser, you do not need to have access for students. By default, it will be up in this top list, but I can click on it and drag it down to the bottom. If you do not use Brightwave, Follett, or Packback, for example, your students do not need access to those. Unless you're using a particular tool, students only need, everybody gets home, we recommend you leave announcements, your syllabus, modules, grades. If dragging does get difficult, you can use the move option by clicking the kebab and telling it where you want it to put it. And again, the number one thing people forget to do is all the way at the very, very bottom, hit that save icon. In our right side menu, the number one most important piece is this course status button. You'll notice that this course right now is unpublished. Publishing a course or publishing items or modules is the same as making it available to students was in Blackboard. So if I were to, ready to publish my course and make it available to students, I would click the word publish and it will light up green. Note that you can still unpublish the course until you have a graded assignment. Once you have that and someone has submitted it, you will no longer be able to unpublish your course. My other options include sharing to Commons, which is a repository of assignments, quizzes, complete modules, individual pages, entire courses sometimes. But you do obviously have to very heavily examine anything you get from the commons. It is an easy way to share among a large group of people and you do have the ability when you share something to the commons to limit it to only ODU staff being able to find it. Importing course content will be very helpful towards the end of the semester when you're ready to prepare for the following semester and it will allow me to import from another course that I have. 
So for example, if I wanted to copy from one of my sandbox courses, if you're building in your course right now, you can type the name of the course. Sometimes it can be a little difficult um, because especially if you have a lot of courses. So if you want to, you can go find your course from your dashboard and copy out the title and paste it in. And it'll make it a little easier to find, especially if you have, if you regularly teach the same course. Now, if I'm choosing all content, that's gonna give me everything that's in that course. If I just want certain things, I can select specific content. I will tell you that the adjust events and due dates is much more accurate in Canvas than it was with Blackboard. But notice that I've clicked select specific content and it hasn't asked me what I want. You do have to click import first and then it'll give you the option to select the content. What's really nice is, remember we changed those settings of what appears in my course nav menu? I can copy those settings over if I choose this course settings box. I can copy over my syllabus. I can expand any option in here I want and get just certain modules, for example, or certain question banks, or even certain assignments. I can choose specific discussion boards from within that. And then once I'm done, I hit select content. And I do get a visual that it's begun. And I will get not only a completed visual, as you see here, when it's done, but I'll also get an email letting me know that it's complete. But one of the most important tools you have is validate links and content. Uh, we frequently hear from faculty that a link that they've given to students is no longer valid. We've all gotten, you know, the emails from people saying, hey, that link doesn't work anymore. The course link validator will actually scan your entire course. And I do get, again, a visual that it's running. It can take a while, especially if you have a lot of content in your course. But what it's going to do is it's going to check my entire course, any link that I have, and make sure that it's valid. So, for example, if Purdue OWL changed its, you know, updated its link from APA 6 to APA 7, it would automatically flag that and say, hey, this link doesn't work anymore. And it gives you a specific link to both the Canvas page and tells you what external link is no longer valid. That can take a few minutes, but don't worry, it's expected. Once it's run, I will get a link to the individual page. It'll tell me which external links specifically were unreachable. And so I could actually go test it. And then I get that I, an error occurred when I try to load that page. But it will actually help me go straight to my Canvas page that has an error. And I know exactly what to look for and what link to update. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit clt.odu.edu.